a model steamboat named Edith. This is part nine, completing the special water tank that will fit in the bow of the boat. And the story so far is that I've finished the sides and the base, now I need to make the front part and the rear part. Nothing new here, I've shown this process in the last episode. I'm using a centre drill and a piece of steel in the machine vise on the drilling machine to keep the brass angle in the correct position while I drill the holes. This water tank is not a precision piece of engineering, it doesn't need to be. That doesn't mean that I'm going to make a bad job of it, it's just that the marking out using a felt tip pen obviously is not 100% accurate. Often though I do use a felt tip pen for marking the metal before I then scribe a line on the black ink. Just makes it easier to see because I don't have any engineer's blue. And also by using a felt tip pen there's less chance of me writing on my hand. I have enough black paint residue on my hands without adding engineer's blue to the list. I marked out and drilled a couple of holes on each side of the tank and using the two holes that are drilled in the side of the tank as guides, I drilled through into the piece of brass angle. Then I threaded the brass angle 8BA, and in this clip I'm screwing in place a couple of 8BA bolts, or machine screws, or whatever you wish to call them. I could have riveted the rear panel to the sides. I would have had to hold a large piece of steel in the vise, then carefully hold the tank in position on the piece of steel, and then by using a rivet snap on the head of the rivets, and a hammer, I could have riveted them this way, but really by the time I've done all that it's much easier to drill a hole, thread it 8BA using a tap and screw a small bolt in there. This method would also make removal of the tank ends very easy, but once they're soldered together I really will never want to do that. This is the underside of the tank and the same principle, drill two holes tapping size for 8BA all the way through into the brass angle. Then carefully drill through the holes just in the brass sheet, clearance size for an 8BA bolt, thread the hole in the angle and screw in a bolt. I need to shape some of this brass angle on the sides to allow the gas tank to sit in place easily. The gas tank is a slightly larger diameter on the base where it's folded over than it is on the main canister. I sat the gas canister on top of the tank and drew a line round the base with a felt tip pen. First of all I tried this drum sander to remove all the brass but I don't think my lifespan's long enough. Then I remembered that a few years ago I bought a full set of Minicraft mini tools and I've never used them, I only bought the set for the drill. In the set was a small orbital sander and this jigsaw and I never thought much of it, I thought well that looks a bit weedy, I'm sure it won't work. So now 15 years later I'm about to find out whether it works or not and to my surprise it works rather well. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the blade because I don't want to break it. This is a metal cutting blade and indeed it is cutting the metal. And to be honest, I never thought it would do this. But in what seemed to be no time at all, the jigsaw took out the pieces of metal. In this clip I'm using the drum sander again fitted to my electric drill, but this time I'm only using the drum sander to remove the marks left by the jigsaw blade. First down one side and then down the other side and this will give enough clearance to just slide the gas canister into position in the water tank. Pretty much like this. I'm going to fit a special support in the bottom of the tank to support the canister. If you just keep watching this part of the series about making the tank without writing in and suggesting what I should do, you will see what happens once the tank is completed. One viewer commented, well as the tank empties isn't it going to float on the water and lift up what's above it? Well, no, I'm not entirely stupid. So dear viewer, what I suggest that you do is just continue watching the series and maybe become a Patreon subscriber, all will be revealed in the fullness of time. This is a larger piece of brass angle because I ran out of the small stuff. And now with the larger piece of brass angle riveted in place at the bottom, I can mark out to drill some holes through the side. As before, I drill a hole all the way through the side plate into the brass angle, then thread the hole and fit a bolt. Then with one bolt in place holding the part rigid, I drill the rest of the holes. First of all, tapping size for 8BA, being very careful when the drill breaks through at the other side. Then I repeat the process for the third hole. With practice it's possible to drill holes quite accurately using a hand drill like this. The next step is to fit a clearance size drill for 8BA and drill out the side of the tank, not going all the way through into the brass angle. And here I'm threading the holes using an 8BA tap, taking great care 
not to be too heavy handed and break the tap. Threading brass with an 8BA tap is quite simple. Threading steel with an 8BA tap can be problematic. You have to back off the tap frequently to clear the swarf. So that's one bolt in place. Then I took out the bolt that I put in the centre, drilled the tank side, clearance size for 8BA and refitted it. And just in case you missed it the first time round, here I'm repeating the process on the other side of the tank. The entire sequence is as follows. First of all, carefully mark out the positions for the holes, preferably in the correct position, on the brass sheet. Drill and tap the first hole in the centre and fit a bolt in position. And the reason for doing that is that this centre bolt holds everything in place while you drill the rest of the holes. Then drill the holes all the way through into the brass angle using a tapping size drill for 8BA. Then fit a twist drill that is clearance size for 8BA and drill through the outer panel taking great care not to let the drill go all the way through the brass angle as well. But it's not the end of the world if you do accidentally drill all the way through the brass angle too, you can just use a nut on the inside. In exactly the same way as I've just been describing, I'm now drilling the holes in the lid. I won't show this because it would be far too boring. It's been difficult doing this for the camera, it's something that you really have to concentrate on. If you're going to make a tank yourself, it's easier because you're not filming it. Don't worry if the sides and top and fronts are not the perfect fit. You can clean those up once the tank is finished. And here is the tank almost finished. It just needs soldering together. I'll cover that in a future episode very briefly. So here I'm going to demonstrate the principle of fitting the canister. The canister just drops into the tank like this. But as the gas evaporates, the tank rises up. And there's the really clever part. Because how do you know if your tank is empty? Well, as the empty canister rises up on top of the water in the water tank, what's going to happen is it's going to push the superstructure off the boat into the water, which then sinks to the bottom of the lake. So as you look out lovingly at your boat across the lake, and you notice that the superstructure is missing, that is telling you that it's time to change the gas tank. Also, the boat will need less power to get it through the water without the weight of the superstructure on it. So you can quickly bring the boat back into the side to change the gas tank then wade into the water to pick up the superstructure from the bottom of the lake. And if you believe that, you believe anything. The position of the tank inside the hull of the boat is very important. It has to sit exactly at the same level as the water line, so that when the boat is sat in the water, the water tank is level. And the size of the tank is relative to the space that I need in the hull for some lead, because this hull is going to need a lot of ballast. There's a lot of space at the front of the tank, at the side of the tank, and more importantly, underneath the tank, in order to keep the centre of gravity as low as possible. The weight of the small amount of water in this water tank will make very little difference to the way the boat sits in the water. That's why I designed the tank to be the size and shape that it is. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.